When it comes to rifle marksmanship, the Swiss take it very seriously. Although Switzerland has long held a reputation amongst American gun owners for being a model of free gun ownership to strive for, few are familiar with the true details of gun possession in Switzerland today. In this video we're going to take a closer look at the current rules of gun ownership in Switzerland. Switzerland has long held a posture of neutrality when it comes to war and conflict, so the need for developing a large offensive military has not been an issue there. However, to maintain a strong defensive posture, the Swiss have made sure that the population is well trained and maintains a defensive militia force to thwart off potential invaders. When World War II raged through Europe, Switzerland was not completely destroyed, unlike many of its neighbors. Due to the combined neutrality and overwhelming abundance of well-trained rifle marksmen of the Swiss people, Hitler wisely chose to avoid that fight. Today the Swiss enjoy that continued security and relative safety and a very low crime rates. Most would-be criminals know much better than to try to force their way into a home in rural Switzerland. It is perhaps because of this stark contrast between Switzerland and the surrounding countries in Europe which suffer the consequences of much more brutal private citizen firearms restrictions straight, straight. that many gun owners in America have latched onto the Swiss as a model of what we should be like. Many in America are under the impression that the Swiss are required to keep their army issued personal weapons at home along with the specified personal retention quantity of government-issued ammo. However, that is not entirely correct. Are the Swiss required to possess weapons at home? What are the current regulations concerning private gun ownership in Switzerland? Is firearms ownership in Switzerland a right like it is in America, or is it more of a privilege? In this video, I'm going to sit down and visit with a participant of the Swiss shooting community to try to get a pulse of what it's like to own guns in uh, one of Europe's most gun-friendly countries. Although this is kind of an informal and unscripted interview, I hope that it sheds some light on the subject as to what gun ownership in Switzerland is really like and corrects some of the misconceptions that I often hear perpetuated amongst those in my beloved American shooting community. Howdy, Rex here. We're in Switzerland. We're headed to the world's largest underground shooting range. This is Robin. He Hello. grew up here. So he's going to explain to us because in America we have some misconceptions about the firearms ownership in Switzerland. Because uh, I was under the assumption that uh, everyone in Switzerland had to kind of be armed, otherwise you'd get a ticket. I've read that in gun magazines and forums and such, but uh, Robin here will uh, explain it for us. So how does that really work? Um, Upon your first education, when you finish it, you have to go to the army to do the RS, that's the Recruiting Schule, which is like um, the, the basic education for army. So you learn uh, shooting and there's some drills like cleaning your shoes, cleaning your rifle, just the basic army skills. And after that, you go in the b class. That means Wiederholungskurse. It's like a repetition course. And you have to serve, I think, 300 army days in a, in a whole time. So um, about a year, almost, yeah, almost a year. But it's like um, it's split into. Yeah, every year you just have to go there two weeks, and then after you have your 300 days. You're like finished with the army and then you can purchase your rifle for about 100 bucks I think. So you actually think. have to purchase your rifle? Yeah, you, I think uh, earlier you just got it, yep. so my dad just got the rifle and uh, nowadays you have to pay for it and you also have to um, get a Waffenerwerbschein, which is a weapons buy permit. So you can't just uh, purchase weapons over the counter, you have to um, get a permit to possess weapons? Or it's like, you 
can buy just weapons over the counter, but that's only old surplus rifles like the Swiss K31, okay. K11, yep. or um, kind of the hunting, antiques, hunting rifles. Okay. But uh, they are all in a list, so you can just buy like um, I think I saw like a Seiko TRG. You can just buy it. You have to have a Waffenerwerbschein. Okay. And for that, you just have to order. Strafregister Auszug, which is uh, a paper which describes every crime that you have done or not. Okay. If it's clean, then it's all good. But if you have two um, crimes like fast driving or yeah, reckless driving or such, so it's a background you can buy a gun. Yeah, to get the paper. Yeah, like that. And, and a fee. You get you get this paper, and then you have to write a formula and tell. Um, what gun that you want to buy, Okay. like uh, if it is a pump action shotgun or a pistol, you can just leave it empty and say, yeah, just want a firearm, but yeah, yeah. Okay. sometimes they just call you and uh, ask, yeah, what, what do you want to buy? And then it goes like, sometimes it's only a week, sometimes two weeks, then you get the Waffenerwerbschein, that's the weapons uh, purchase permit. And then you can go like, yeah, you just can go in the gun store and tell the guy at the counter, yeah, I want that, give it to me, and he writes it. He has to send the letter to the canton, which is like a part of Switzerland. It's like a split into cantons. Like the US is split in states, there is cantone okay. in Switzerland. And then, uh, yeah, it's like finished. And so, uh, what what was the cost on that paperwork again? So it's twenty bucks for the paper which uh, describes all your crimes. Twenty francs, or 20, you... yeah, twenty francs. Yep, okay. Yep. For the Strafregister Auszug. Okay. And it's fifty francs for the Waffenerwerbschein. Now, do you have to renew that every couple of years, or is um, it good forever? It's it's only for this gun. Okay. That's the problem. So, so it's for each weapon. Yeah, you can buy three weapons. Um, at one dealer at okay. one time with one Waffenerwerbschein. Okay. But if you buy a weapon at one dealer and one at another dealer, you need two Waffenerwerbschein. Okay. So. So are you allowed to have like a pretty good collection? Do yeah. Do some guys have a lot of weapons? Or? Yeah, sure. There's okay. no limit uh, upwards. Okay. But uh, like I said, it's when you do a crime like fast driving, yep. they can take it away. Okay, you even a speeding ticket. It. Yeah. Okay. Now, how about uh? Like uh, bearing weapons, like can, uh, transporting them, can you carry them on you? Yeah. So uh, carrying a weapon is very difficult to get. You need to have a carry license, like in the US. But uh, here you need like uh, a very um, distinguished, what is it, uh, reason? Okay. So you gotta have a good like, excuse, um, huh? Yeah. This guy told me he will kill me. So, or yeah. there's a gang that wants to kill me or something. Or uh, earlier you got one when you uh, was like a, a juvelier or a bankier. So worked in a bank and had to transport money around or something. <laughs> you could carry a gun. But nowadays no one, um, nearly low, no one gets a Waffen Tragschein, which is a, a carry license. Okay. So, no, can but you open carry at all? Like carry it on a holster openly, or is that a bad deal? Um, I never have seen one, but the one, the ones you see, it's like just the ones who uh, either police or guys who go to the army. They have yeah, just the rifle on the back. Okay. But uh, really, a private citizen over, open carrying, you don't see that. Ever. You don't see that very much ever. anymore, huh? Okay. So uh, when you transport them in the vehicle, do you got to keep them in the trunk locked up, or can you, how it's, does that work? Uh, it's a bit uh, swami article. So, okay. Um, it's like keeping it at home is also very swampy because okay. you just have it locked up. Um, for, uh, what is it called? Against third, okay. third parties. Yep. So. Um, so you have to keep the weapons locked if you keep them at home. No, not really. So okay. you just have to to ensure that no third party can access it. Okay. And in the past, there were some uh, some uh, 
jury, what is it called? Some decisions from a jury that yep. said you just need um, the lock on your front door of the house. Yep. That's a. Uh, that's uh, good. So the precedence so, has been set in the courts. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. And uh, you don't in Germany. You just have to have a safe of a special um, designation like a class. But uh, around here you don't need that. So you can uh, throw your your uh, sick in your uh, in your storage closet or, or yeah, whatever. Closet, yep. whatever where your clothes are and yeah just leave it there. Which lake is this here? Uh, this is the Fjallalstettelsee. It's like in English the <laughs> four wood um, city sea. Four no, wood and city sea? At the, the sea in the middle of Switzerland. Okay. When you look, when you look it up on the map it looks funny like um, there is one uh, lake and there and there and there are some islands between but it would be pretty nice to live here yeah so what's the public opinion like for uh, firearms ownership here in Switzerland um, I think it's neutral because most of the people they know at least one who is uh, in shooting sports okay and uh, mostly the ones who own guns just own, gu own guns or like uh, yeah like the uh, maxed out AR-15s or six they uh, don't really um, you don't really see them a lot okay you just see the sport shooters uh, going with the rifle on the back to the range okay but uh, the auto guys like pistol shooters or revolver guys you don't see any of them in public and um, it's like uh, they don't uh, really advertise it. So you have your annual meeting, that's the Feldschießen. You can go there and uh, and shoot for free for the whole population of Switzerland. Oh, okay. It's paid by the state. Yeah. But uh, many young people just think uh, shooting is a sport for old ones. And, yep. Um, yeah. If you if you read the media here, it gets uh, put like. Uh, Shooting is killing people and... Oh, they're trying it too, aren't they? Media. Yep. And we don't have like a, a media that's pro-gun. It's okay. all pretty much anti-gun. Yeah, they're working on it. They're trying to nibble away at it. So uh, last Saturday there was uh, this gun buyback pro program and there were about uh, six people, uh, including me, at nine o'clock there when it started. Um, and we checked every car if, yeah, which gun do you bring back to, uh, to make to scrap and then uh, if it was uh, in good condition or a rare gun, we just bought it and after about an half an hour, a police officer came out and told us, yeah, they don't like what we are doing, but it's legal, so uh, we kept on doing it <laughs> and about an hour later, they, or he came out again and told me, yeah, you gotta go. If I see you here in five minutes, um, yeah, they're legal. Like, you get prosecuted. So you basically picked up a rifle for how much? Um, the Sig 550 for free. Yeah. And a what is it called? A Langewehr, so long rifle, 89 slash 11 for okay. 50 bucks. But Not bad. It's too much for that, but it was a nice guy and we talked a lot. The amount of people, um, mostly it was just old uh, women or men okay. who want to bring their, back their service uh, rifles or uh, one woman who I spoke to was like her uh, husband died because he was uh, like, yeah, he had cancer or something yep. and uh, she um, she cleaned up the home and found these guns and brought it back. So she had it out of the house. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, they try those buybacks too in the states a lot yeah. sometimes, certain areas. Some uh, some of these people, they just turned around because uh, we told them, yeah, you can go to the gun store and you get cash for this gun. So. Yep. <laughs> but they wanted to give it up for free. And they scrap iron it, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's crazy. Sad, not crazy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, most of the carbines and such, they, they are in pretty bad condition. Okay. So either rusted up like an old bicycle or just uh, falling apart. Yep. Like the wood on these old rifles is mostly dinged up like hell. You can't use them. Or, yeah, if you do a custom stock, maybe then. Okay. Oh, that's okay. Oh, sure, sure, sure. So that's one K thirty one. Okay. Take one. Can we grab one, Jordan. Thank you. Okay. Still filming. What's that? 
Uh, that's the, the ammo you get in the army. Okay, so. yep. What do you want to shoot first? No, I'll let you go first and then I'll follow you. Ah, okay. You demonstrate the proper way to the range That's etiquette. my first time 300 meters with the 550. Okay, so. yeah. So you see this one? <laughs> there was a rubber around it, but it broke off yesterday. Okay. Damn thing. So should I load 20? I don't know. I, you had the clip, yeah. so I was going to help. Where is it now? Do you want to put it in the bag? No. Also, I'll put it in the bag. But there's no other one. Do you have three at the moment? Yeah, yeah. Don't put it in the bag. So some of the interesting observations I made uh, while making this video is uh, the differences in restrictions between the two different countries, the United States and Switzerland. Although a lot of the shooting community here um, kind of talk about Switzerland as if it's more gun friendly and it's easier to own firearms, they're required to own firearms. It might have been that way um, in the, uh, a few generations ago. But in the last 20 years, really, I mean, in especially, especially recently, there's actually a lot more gun restrictions in Switzerland than there is in the United States. And uh, mainly, after talking with uh, some of the sportsmen in Switzerland there who enjoy their rifle shooting sports, um, the very distinct difference that they recognize is that in America, we have the right to bear arms. In Switzerland is not a right, it's either a duty as a soldier because most of the people go through the, the military training, so during that phase it's their duty to learn how to operate weapons, but it's a privilege that's very, very easily lost in that country. As uh, we discussed with Robin, uh, even a speeding ticket you can lose your weapons in Switzerland. Uh, if you get two tickets in a row, uh, you're probably going to lose your, your gun privileges over there. Whereas in the United States, they recognize, and like it's kind of always greener on the other side of the fence, we really kind of see their situation in kind of romantic lighting for some reason. And uh, it's interesting to go over there and talk to them because they kind of view us in the same way that we view them. They think that, it, man, it would be nice to go to the United States where it's a lot more free to own weapons amongst the shooting community over there. That was an interesting observation. So they recognize that the United States does have gun rights, the Second Amendment right, that it's, we look at it as a God-given right to be able to defend ourselves and have the means to do so. It's not that way over there. It's, it's very much privilege. Uh, there's, you know, the United States have a lot of variance between the different states, uh, local gun laws, state gun laws, and, and what city you live in may have different levels of restrictions. But as far as the rural United States, most of the United States 
uh, minus maybe California, some of the big cities and places like that, uh, we have it a lot easier for firearms access and ownership here. And Switzerland does. Switzerland's uh, pretty strict with their gun uh, ownership, like we talked about. They have the uh, a lot of paperwork you have to go through, you have to pay for it, you have to prove uh, a lot of things, you just don't have that right, you have to really jump through the hoops to get your weapons there. So the final conclusion is that although Switzerland appears to be a lot more lax in its uh, gun restrictions than the United States, um, it's really not that way, it's just that against the contrast of Europe, the rest of Europe, which is very restrictive, Switzerland really stands out against that backdrop. Um, it's definitely one of the most uh, firearm friendly countries in the world, but the United States actually is a bit more free as far as your options. And we do have the constitutional right to bear arms. Although it is uh, under constant threat of being lost, and it's uh, constantly being f infringed upon every time they add new things to the books. We still do have it pretty good here. So that's something to be aware of. And um, I think that it's important, the important lesson here is that we have something very precious. And uh, if we lose that, there's not really any place in the world we can run to that's better. Uh, so a lot of the stories you hear about how... F um, the gun laws are in Switzerland are kind of rooted in how it used to be maybe 40 years ago. And uh, today it's actually even worse than probably trying to own weapons in California in a lot of ways. There's a lot of hoops you got to jump through and even in California you can get away with a lot of speeding tickets. You can run a stop sign and not have your firearms privileges removed. Uh, so it appears to be greener on the other side of the fence a lot. But in all reality, we have it pretty good, and uh, what we have is, is worth uh, being vigilant for here, and uh, worth definitely speaking up about. So hopefully this video helped to add some perspective and uh, show where we're at in the world standing with uh, firearms ownership and correct some of the misconceptions. The next video is going to be just uh, showing the Brunig Indoor Shooting Range in more detail. We gave a, a quick video on that earlier, but uh, it's a pretty neat shooting facility, so I'll throw in some more of that here next, so enjoy that.